Hello, hello, hello. It is about one o'clock in the morning. 12 o'clock in the morning. Where you gonna be outside on the corner? It is cold. It is nine degrees outside, but it's toasty and warm in my car. So I was warming it up before I did this. And I, now I wish I had taken my coat off. I, um, so let's break down the day really quick. Um, I got up and I had to work today and do some stuff. And then I wrote for a little bit. And then I ran errands and I came home and I filmed my videos. And then I, people are like racing all around the world. This is crazy. And then, um, three cars just like darted at me the other way and that car just went around me and I guess people have places to go. Um, and then I like went back out to run an errand at like seven o'clock. I had to go to the store to get some stuff and I was gonna stop at uh, Fresh Time to get something to eat on the way home. And Alex was on his way home. So he got stuff to make a salad and I got um, soup from Fresh Time. I got broccoli and cheddar soup and I made a peanut butter sandwich and that's what I had for dinner tonight. It was really good. I like wanted something warm because it's so cold and I haven't had soup in a long time and um, not the healthiest of things, but it was it's all I had today, so. And Alex has totally got me hooked on drinking Gatorade. I'm like drinking Gatorade now. Um, although the Gatorade that I got, I wanted the low cal that is like G2, but I really like the taste of this, which is um, crisp and cool Gatorade Frost. Glacier Cherry. Not a big grape fan. Um, and then I had to take the dogs over to the kennel tonight because they're getting baths and stuff tomorrow. So Tanya asked me to meet her at the kennel at nine. So I met them over there. She's like the cutest little, like they're in like the uh, day grooming, not day grooming, day boarding area. And she had this like, she has like a big pen in there. So it's like huge, it's like 10 by 10. And she had like blankets laid down for each of them. And she had the heat turned on and she had it low lit and it was perfect for them. And they like all just marched right in there. They were all excited about it. And um, so left them and then Tani and I went back to her house and her son Nick is in town who I've known since he was like four, three and a half, four. So um, he lives in Florida now. So I hung out and I talked to him and Tanya, her husband Eric, for like an hour. And then I came home and I was gonna do a live stream. I was so tired, you guys. It's like this cold is just taking it out of me. And um, so I told Alex, I said, I'm gonna lay down instead of doing that. He was like, all right. He's like, I'll be right up there. So he came upstairs and we were talking and honest to God, I fell asleep while we were talking. And I had the weirdest dreams. And um, between the dreams that I had and the book that I'm listening to on Audible, I'm like all up in my head right now. So the book that I'm listening to is Adam Silvera's um, They Both Die in the End. It's his, He's written three books and it's his third book and I've read all of his books. The first one was called More Happy Than Not. Um, he, his books are typically, like they're LGBT books and they're typically about like um, Latino kids in New York City and they're really well done, and um, I can't remember what the second one is called. More Happy Than Not was the first one. But anyway, I love Adam Silvera. He is an amazing author, and um, the second book, I did not love. I didn't dislike it, but I didn't love, but this one is really good, and it's about like, the kid is like 18 or 19 in it, and it's about these, um, you get like a death, and I don't know if it's this one's going to be LGBT or not, but you get like a call on the day that you're going to be dead, or that you're going to die, and they, like, it's by this place called Deathcast, and they tell you that this is the day that you're going to die, so basically you can go and live your life to the fullest, and, um, the interesting thing about his books is that he always has like these... Um, advanced concepts that are like, you know, like in the future concepts, but they take place really today, if that makes sense. Like it's as if it's happening today. And, um, God, it's so hot in here now. 
so in the book, like I'm at the beginning of it, but the kid is like talking about, I finished the other book last night, Katherine Anderson's um, A Christmas Room. He's talking, it was actually really good. I did a whole review of it on my um, booktube channel if you want to see what I had to say. But he is like, the kid is talking about like all the things he won't do again and like the things that like he wants to do on his last day. And it really kind of puts in perspective, like, the way that we look at our lives. It's interesting how it's written, you know? It's, like, making me think about the things that are important. Like, he's leaving notes for his neighbors, and he want, his dad is in ICU, and he wants to go see his dad one last time. And um, every time I come by here, there's, like, all of these here I'm going to show you. I don't know if you'll... There aren't any tonight, but, like, do you see this huge field out here? Every time I come by here... So this is um, Richie Woods... And it's like this, um, what do you call it? This like nature pre preserve. And there's always deer along there. But tonight there are no deer. So anyway, like the last couple nights at like field, there's been like six deer out there eating. I actually thought about bringing like a loaf of bread and throwing it out there, but I don't know like can deer eat loaves of bread? I don't want to do something that's like dangerous for them, you know? Um, I remember when I was a little kid in school one year, we took pine cones, we put peanut butter all over them and then bird seed in the peanut butter. We dipped it in like bird seed or rolled it in, pe in bird seed. And then so we could hang them outside and so the birds could eat all winter long. I was thinking the other day, I was like, that might be nice to do for the birds because it's so cold this year, you know? But anyway, um, this book really has me thinking about, like, these things that I talk about all the time anyway, like, what is life, you know, what does life stand for, and all this kind of stuff. And then, I lay down, and I was so, like, warm and cozy in our bed, and I fell asleep, like, really quick, and I had the most bizarre dreams, and, uh, one of the dreams was that, like, I was driving this, um, and this is weird, because last night in my live stream, I did these questions that I used to, like, ask people, like, in my, I would do it with group therapy back, like, 20 years ago. And then we got talking about dreams in my live stream, and I was telling people, like, what certain dreams mean or don't mean and things like that. And, um, so anyway, uh, now I completely lost my mind when I track my old, I was going to say. But anyway, we were talking about, like, what dreams mean, and I was saying what certain dreams mean, and certain dreams mean this, and certain dreams mean that. Well... What's interesting is I was having this dream that I was driving this car, and it was like one of those Mini Coopers, and I almost felt like I was in Europe, but I was like, like in Italy, or in like the south of France, it was very hilly, and like kind of mountainous almost, kind of like, you know, like how the Ca To Catch a Thief was filmed, and um, like when they're going around those roads, like the beginning or the end, I can't remember what part of it was, but anyway, and um my brakes were going out in um, my dream, like, and I'm sure this is a control dream, but, like, my brakes were going to go out, and then all of a sudden, I was, like, in this apartment, and, like, I was, like, wanting to, like, film it and send it to Alex, because this apartment was so beautiful, and it was, like, dark wood floors, all the woods were stucco, or all the walls were stucco, and it, like, overlooked the ocean, but, like, when I stepped out on the balcony and looked down, I was, like, a hundred stories up. It was, like, very scary. I was very, very high, and I didn't know how to get out of the apartment. Okay, this is really weird, but Julie Andrews was showing me the apartment. Like, I'm like, why Julie Andrews? Like, that makes no sense whatsoever, right? But Julie Andrews was showing me the apartment, and, um she was leaving and she was like, you know, this is yours now, like to have. And I was like, really? And then, um, so all of a sudden Alex was at this dream and we were like, he was showing, well, Tanya tonight showed me, she redid her whole bedroom and it's very bohemian now. And, um, but anyway, I think maybe that's part of it because, like, Alex was showing me, like, the master bedroom in the dream. But before that part, like, I was showing different parts of the bedroom or the house to him. Like, I was recording it and sending it to him. And then all of a sudden, he was there. 
and like he and I like laid down and went to sleep together but then like when I woke up it was like still Alex but it wasn't Alex if that makes sense it was actually my friend Chandler and I was like this is what but like it wasn't him it was Alex but like it looked like him you know what I mean and um so I was like, I have to go. Oh no, he said he was going to listen to this concert. There was like this violinist that was playing. Like it was all very like artsy and like, you know, like classic art and books and things like that. And so anyway, um, he left and I was like trying to find him. And I was like, I have to find my car. And I have like, you know, my, you know, the things where you beep your car and you, you know, like you can like when you, you know, to like, click, like when you lock your door, it like beeps or anyway, I like beeped it to like lock my, I was trying to find where my car was and I couldn't find my car. And I, um, I told him, I was like, I have to go find my car. I don't know where my car is. And like in my dream, I knew I had gotten drunk the night before and left my car somewhere. I never have using dreams anymore. I haven't had a using dream and I bet it's been 15 years, honest to God. And using dreams when you're in recovery are like you have a dream that you used or you woke up the next day and you were hung over from the day before. And sometimes back in the day when I first got sober, like I had dreams where I felt like I could still smell the alcohol coming off of me. I mean, they were that real. But I haven't had a, a using dream in 20 years or something like that. So anyway, it was very bizarre. And, um, I woke up and I was like, or I, like, I had no idea where my car was, so I had to go find my car. And Alex was like, telling me about this professor that he met, and he was like, this guy would be like, really good to like, teach us like, about classical violin. I was like, okay. And um, he's like, do you need me to help you find your car? And I was like, no, I think I know where it's at, and I think I left it with this woman. I have no idea who this woman was in my dream. Like, she looked familiar to me, but like, I don't know who she is, and so. I uh, go, and all, then all of a sudden, I'm on the side of this mountain, like, literally going up around this mountain driving, and um, I'm in my car, but this woman is driving my car, and she's like, she starts screaming at me, and she's like, you have no brakes, you have no brakes, why didn't you tell me you have no brakes, and then all of a sudden, like, I'm on the side of the road, like, I just, like, jumped out of the car, and, but I'm having to get my car fixed. And my friend that owns a garage, I call him, and he's, like, in Dominican Republic, which I totally know why that is, because I was, like, one of my other friends is in the Dominican Republic right now, and I saw pictures on Instagram, so I'm sure that's where that came from. But he was, like, in the Dominican Republic, and he wouldn't answer my calls. And I was like, oh, my God, I'm not going to be able to get my car fixed, and now I'm at the top of this mountain, and my car is stuck up here. I just felt trapped, you know? It was like one of those dreams. And then all of a sudden, like, Alex is there, and he's like, everything is gonna be okay. And I was like, no, but like, my car is up here. And he's like, no, I got you another car. And I was like, you got me another car? And he's like, yeah, you don't even need to worry about that car. And I was like, oh, okay. And then I was like, completely fine. And I was like, driving down this mountain. And like, I was, remember I was like, testing the brakes, and they were perfect. And, uh, and then I woke up, and I was like, that dream, like, I just like, stuck with me. Like, certain dreams stick with me. And I very vividly remember my dreams when I was a little kid. My mom used to have me keep a dream journal where I would write down my dreams. I mean, she never, she was like, you keep it secret, you can hide it or whatever, but she's like, it'll help you remember your dreams. And so I, d I used to do that for a long time and that really trains your mind to help you remember your dreams. It's, it's bizarre almost how much you remember them. So, yeah, so then I got up, and then, like, do you ever have one of those moments where you're, like, when you're asleep, and you're, like, awake, and you're fully awake, but you're still kind of in your dream a little bit? Like, that's how I felt. Like, I was, like, still kind of, like, in my dream. It was weird. And, um, so I don't know. Maybe that dream means put on the brakes. Maybe that dream means, I don't know. Maybe the dream has nothing to do with my brakes at all. I do know that my um, my rear brake light is out. This is probably what it means. Um, this guy, Tanya and I were driving the other day and we were driving and he kept on like 
like honking at me and so we pulled in and he like which we shouldn't have done Tony was like that was so stupid he could have been a serial killer we pulled in and he pulled next to us and he was like your brake light is out and I was like he's like your right light brake light is out and I was like oh thanks that's probably what that is because I've been meaning all week long to go get a change and I haven't done it I bet that's what that means the whole dream so and I also meant to go buy lottery tickets tonight, and I didn't. It was $440 million for the Powerball. So if you won, can you give me a million dollars? <laughs> Please? It's now 8 degrees. I spend a lot of time in my head, though, with, like, dreams and thinking about things like that. Like, I've even, like put like notes in my phone about my dreams, you know, and wanted to like figure out what they meant. I'm not a believer that dreams foretell our future. I believe dreams are pieces of what we see or what we experience in our life during that week or that last, you know, couple days mixed with our subconscious working overtime. That's what I believe our dreams are. So, like, if you do makeup every day and then you have a dream that you're doing makeup tutorials, it may not mean that, like, you're supposed to do makeup tutorials. It may just mean that you've been doing makeup a lot. You know what I mean? Like, one of the things is that I used to have a lot of dreams about work. And, um, I mean, I don't really work that much anymore. But when I did, when I was working, like, 60 hours a week, I would dream about work all the time. And, um... I remember telling a friend of mine, and she was like, oh, that's a common dream. That means you're dreaming that you're working too much. Like, you, you really aren't ever getting your mind out of work. And I was like, oh, wow. I really learned to pace myself. You know, back in the day... I would just push and push and push myself almost to the point of exhaustion with working. And I was always very driven. I always had like three projects going on at the same time. You know, if I wasn't, if it wasn't about working in the facility that I worked in, you know, it was about building my team building program or it was about, you know, writing my book or, you know, redoing something in my apartment or my house or something like that. You know, it was like always something, the next thing that I was doing. And, um, like, my blog was a really big part of that for a long time. And, um... I think sometimes it's good just to relax. I remember... Like, I feel like all of these, a lot of these stories I'm starting to repeat myself on, but... We had pink eye going around our hospital one year. Like, all the kids were getting pink eye, and, like, even the adult patients were getting pink eye. And if you don't know what pink eye is, it's highly contagious. And so, I came into work, and I had, like, pink eye in one of my... It looked like I had pink eye in one of my eyes. And so, they immediately made me leave and go across the street to med check and get my contact... Or, get my eye checked. And, um... The woman was like... And I never did this. Like, if even if I was sick, I would go in and I would um, run group therapy. I would chart all my group notes. I would go to the clinical meeting and then I would ask my supervisor if I could go home early. And that was usually around lunchtime that all of my, like, responsibilities were done. Because I just always thought it was so rude when people would call in sick when they weren't sick. Just to have, like, a, you know, R&R &R day. Because it meant somebody else had to cover their shit. You know, it was just rude. Now, I don't necessarily believe that today. I believe you take an R&R &R day if you need it. You know, I don't I don't feel the same way about it that I did then. I was, like, almost, like, intent on proving, like, what a hard worker I was. But listen, none of us dies wishing we had worked a little bit harder. Okay? That's just bullshit. And if you get accrued time, you know, like, most of us get, a, like, most people get accrued time now. You know, personal and sick time. If you get that, then use it the way that you want to use it. You know, don't screw somebody over and on the busiest day, if you're not sick, take an R&R &R day. But, you know, if it's not a heavy day and you need to take an R&R &R day, take an R&R &R day. You know, I really think that's healthy for people. In fact, um, I worked with this woman back in the day. Oh, my God, what an amazing therapist. She was kind of my mentor when I uh, worked in this one internship. And she had um, a son that was, like, a junior in high school, and her daughter was in college. And she had this policy that they got three R&R &R days a year. But then they couldn't fake call in sick or anything else, right? 
But if they woke up and they just didn't feel like going to school, she didn't even question it. If it, you know, even if they didn't have a test that day, whatever the issue was, if they said to her, you know, like I need an R and R day, she'd say okay, and she would call them in sick. But only three times a year, right? None of this other bullshit. Like if they were sick and they were saying, oh, we're sick, then they had to go to the doctor always. And what she did was she cut down on their calling in sick to school. They only ever missed three days a year, really, okay? You think about how many people, how many days of school most kids miss. They really only ever miss three days of school because they didn't really ever get sick, right? And what it also taught them was to be in control of what days they felt like they needed to be off. And I can remember saying to her, like, you even let them take the day off, even if they have a test. And she's like, you know, they have to make that decision for themselves, like whether or not they need to be there that day. Maybe they didn't study for it. Maybe they need to stay home that day and go in the next day and take it. I don't know, but I'm not, you know, they've used one of their days at that point. It's not like we haven't any of us called, you know, somebody and rescheduled a meeting or something because we don't aren't as prepared as we wish we were and then we you know feign illness and then the next day go do it and it's a killer meeting because we're a little bit more prepared so I always thought that was an interesting lesson that she taught you know her kids and it's interesting when I look at them today because they're highly successful kids I mean they're really really successful and I'm not gonna say that they didn't have well he she was always an amazing kid but like and I mean by amazing, I mean like she never caused any problems, she never got in trouble, and you know, that kind of stuff. Now her son got, he got into some trouble, but now he's just an unbelievable young adult, you know? Contributing to the world in a positive way, which I think is what we all ask of everybody, you know, that grows up and has a mind, is that you don't contribute negativity to the world and ugliness. be one of the hardest things for me was having to look at my parents you know if like I was doing that and like being okay with that like you know I'm not saying like no matter what I was doing if I was putting negativity out there in the world you know and like everybody knew it even if I was benefiting off of it like I think to look at like my dad in the face and have him like I just think that he would you know like My dad's respect is important to me, and he may not always agree with the choices that I make in my life, and that's okay. And he may not always understand the choices I make, but I think that respect is important, you know, from him to let him know that he did a good job, you know, raising me. And when you raise children the correct way, they know not to put out that ugliness into the world, I think, a lot of times, I don't know. I mean, a lot of, I mean, a lot of times, it takes a village to raise a child. I'm a believer in that. It's not just, it's not just the parent's responsibility. I can't tell you how many parents I've had to look at through the years and be like, you know what? Guilt is a pointless emotion. You did all you could do. You did the best you could at parenting. And this is past you at this point, you know? Of course, my camera light is on saying that it's too hot in my car. I'm going to turn my heat off. Um... So it isn't a parent's fault, you know, past some point. There's only so much parents can do. I really do believe that, you know. But I want my dad to be proud of me. So that's like a, a, a force for me. I mean, I wanted my mom to be proud of me, you know. Um, but about the time that I had to go to MedCheck. So I went to MedCheck and I had like pink eye, supposedly. I didn't know what I had. All I knew is that my, my eye hurt. Like it just was like, it just hurt. It was in pain. And um, it didn't sting or anything like that. It just hurt. And um, so I went there and she was like, so I used to not wear contacts every day. I went back and forth. I wear like contacts one day, glasses the next, back, you know. And I'll never forget, the doctor was so nice. And she was like, do you have your glasses with you? And I was like, yeah, I have them in my bag. And she's like, can you take your contacts out? And um, like one of the, and she's like, you have to throw them away. She's like, that's one of the first things with like pink eye is that if you have pink eye, you have to throw them away. I just put these contacts in and I threw them away. And so she examines my eyes and she's like, well, she's like, you don't have pink eye. And I said, I don't. And she, I said, it's going around the hospital. And she said, oh, I know. I've seen several employees that over there that they have, they do have pink eye. And I said, she said, but what concerns me is that, um, your eye is at a stage where it's physically showing that you're exhausted. And I said, what do you mean? And she goes, 
Okay, I had to let my camera cool down a little bit. Um, so I was talking about the pink eye thing. She said, you don't have pink eye. She said, but your eye is physically showing that you are exhausted. And I was like, what? And she was like, when your eye starts showing this certain way, it means you're not getting sleep. You're not, you know, on and on and on. And this was actually during my relationship that, like, it was just not good at the end. It wasn't good at all. And it was, like, six months, I think, before we broke up. And I really wasn't sleeping, you know? And I was working 60 hours plus a week. And I was tired. And I wasn't telling anybody. And, you know, other than Tanya at the time, I didn't really have anybody to talk to about what was going on in my life. And um, I didn't... I mean, there have been periods of my life with Tanya, like not in the last, I would say, 10 years, but um, before that, where Tanya and I would only see each other once a week. And uh, I think that was one of those periods of time. I kind of like, my relationship was not, it was so bad that I just kind of like shut down and stopped talking to people about it. So anyway, um, was like, okay, so I don't have pink eyes, so I have to go back to work. And she's like, well, I'll tell you what I can do. She's like, I can, you know, I can say it was pink eye and I will give you, you know, some time off work. And she was like, and I've never, never asked anybody to do this for me before, right? And I knew she was right. Like, I knew I was like physically exhausted. And this is where, like, you guys know, like, like, movie stars say, like, they went to the hospital for exhaustion. Like, I understand it now, you know? And, um, I was almost, like, on remote control as far as, like, getting up, going to work, coming home, doing this project, doing that project, not sleeping, you know? Taking an hour nap, and that was really the only deep sleep that I would get throughout the day on remote control. I just did it in and out, in and out, in and out. I was not a happy person. I just actually talked about this on my Peterisms vlog today. Um, I think I called it when to let go. And, it, and that was that. I was just miserable in my life. I, I was not happy about anything, you know? And um, I said, when, how long can I, um, can you write me out for Pink Eye? And she said, we usually write out 48 hours, but I can write you out up to a, a week if it's bad. And she goes, I'm going to write you out up to, I, I said, looked at her and I said, Could, would you be willing to do that? And she said, I'm going to write you out up to a week. Or I'm going to write you out uh, for a week. She said, so you leave today and you come back a week from now to work. And I said, okay, thank you. And um, I just relaxed. I slept. I watched TV. I ate some really good meals. You know, I hung out probably with, I don't remember who I hung out with or what I did, but I do remember being in my apartment a lot and just like watching TV and just relaxing and being, you know at home. Like, I just needed that, you know? And I think we need that sometimes. I think we so need to take care of ourselves. I, I think a lot of times, you know, especially when we have kids or parents that are elderly and sick or siblings that are sick, you know, or, you know, we're in high stress jobs, we don't take care of ourselves. And I think it's vital to, you know, our well-being and for our being able to take care of other people. Like, I always say this to people when I get these messages. You know, I get a lot of messages from people, and they'll say, thank you for encouraging me. You know, like, I've been so depressed lately. You know, like, I, my mom is in the hospital. I have to help her. You know, I'm, you know, I've been sick. I've had a cold. You know, like, I'm a single mom. Blah, 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 blah. My ex doesn't help out that much with the kids. And I'm like, okay, I always say first, remember this. You aren't good for anybody if you're not taking care of yourself, period. End of story. Like, you have to take care of yourself. You have to. We have to, you know, be willing to make sure, and it's not a selfishness, it's a selfish move. It's taking care of ourselves so that we're healthy for other people. And I say it to people all the time. I'm like, but what are you doing to take care of yourself? Like, did you go see a movie this week? Did you rent a movie at home? Did you get a movie from the, you know, Red Box? Red Box? Did you, you know, watch something on Netflix? Did you read a book? Did you take a nap? Did you eat ice cream sundae? I mean, all of those little things are ways that we can take care of our soul. And, um, and it's important, you know, like to take care of our souls and make sure that we're doing okay. It really is. It's, it's vital, you know. I just finished my Gatorade. <laughs> it was so good. I think I might have a little bit more. Do you ever 
try to get the last little bit out. So good. So yeah. I hadn't thought about that pink eye thing probably since the last time I told it on here. I don't know, and that's kind of a good lesson for me, you know, is like I just go, 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 go. And um, really from the point that I get up in the, during the day, I'm just like go all the time. And um, who is, why are all these people texting me? My friend Dustin is texting me. He's like, yeah, how about that live stream, girl? Because I said I'm going to do a live stream when I get home. And I fell asleep because I was taking care of myself, see? But I had said I wanted to see how many days in a row I could live stream. But maybe I'll just see how many days this month I can live stream. Sometimes you have to change your goals, you know? And that's okay. I think we're supposed to get, Tanya said, more snow this week, maybe, or it's supposed to get colder again. Oh, my God. So, so many people yesterday told me to get that O'Keefe stuff, which, <laughs> honestly, I haven't started trying yet, but I'm going to try it tonight before I go home. And we have the humidifier going, and I bought this humidifier, like, uh, stuff that you put in it, and it smells up the whole house. It makes it smell so good. I'm gonna miss my little doggies tonight. That's the other thing. It's like when you have three dogs, it's like to have to take care of three dogs, you know, is like, I love it. I love every minute of it, but it's a lot, you know, you're busy, you know, I mean, take them outside every hour, feed them, you know, and they get real bored, you know, just like today, it's like, like, somebody asked me the other day in a comment, they said, what do your dogs do all day long? My dogs sleep, but then when I'm up, they want to play. And so, like, Boo and Tucker will play a lot by themselves, but Pee-Pee likes to just sleep during the day, and honestly, he's a night owl like I am. I think I've kind of trained him. So, like, he's up at night. So, if I'm, like, on the computer working or writing or something, he's, like, in the chair, like, over that chair that I always film my videos in. He's, like, over there asleep watching me. And then if I get up, he gets up. And I take him out about every 45 minutes. And, um, you know, Boo and Tucker go to sleep with their dad upstairs. And, um, but, like, Tucker plays all night long. And if we have all three dogs in bed with us, Tucker and Pee Pee are up the entire night. Little area that Tanya made for them was so cute tonight. I was so excited for them. Pee Pee just walked right down in. He loves it as Aunt Tanya's. They don't mind going there at all. I don't know if maybe they just trust it or they, it's because they know Tanya so well or whatever, but they just all three of them. Boo Radley's the only one that's like, oh no, I don't think I need to be here. He doesn't trust it. But he is such, Boo Radley is such a papa's boy. Like, he like always wants to be with me and I carried him in tonight, and because um, I didn't want them to have to like put their feet, put their little paws um, on the ice, and so I carried each one in, and um, he like he was the last one, and he clung to me. He was like, "Oh no, Dad, I don't need to go here." But then he walked right on in with with uh, Tucker and Pee Pee. It was so cute. So <laughs> dogs are funny, aren't they? They're so sweet. talk to the vet. I need to call the vet. I didn't talk to her last week because it was like New Year's and the week before that was Christmas. When was the last time I talked to her? I think it was the Friday before Christmas maybe? It was the last time I talked to her? It was the last day they were open before Christmas. And she said she would check back in with me and I haven't heard from her so I need to call her and just let her know that the cough is doing well. His cough is doing really, really well. He's not coughing as much. Like, maybe once a day, if that. But then I even wonder, like, how much of the, the cold is affecting it. He does not like the cold at all. And I talked to Tanya tonight. Tomorrow I'm going to go to uh, PetSmart, and I'm going to find little booties for them. 
Because she's like, it really makes a difference. And I was like, do they like seem weird in them or can they like walk in them? She's like, oh no, they like their little booties if you get the kind that like are comfortable for them. And I was like, but how, like every time I take them out, I have to put booties on them. She goes, just leave them on them. She was like, you don't you have to take them off of them. She's like, they're not going to be any dirtier than their paws are. I was like, well, that's true. So, but I think that's like, unless they're super comfortable, I can't imagine the dogs wanting to have little booties on all. I mean, I wouldn't leave them on them at night when they sleep, obviously, but throughout the day to take them out and stuff like that. I just, I miss them being able to like run and whatever. I was watching um, the news tonight, which I never do, the local news. And they have this story on there about, I feel like I watch this story, the same story every year. And, um, that was like an old fashioned root beer and hot dog stand. But they had this story on there about how animal control was like out. And, um, oh my God, that donut shop is open. The, they had, um, animal control was out and they were like getting called to all of these different houses because people were leaving their dogs outside and um, like for hours and the, they had found a frozen a dog that was completely frozen to death I was like our sweet Christ like that who does that and um, then they kept on showing this little pit bull it was adorable and his name was Brownie and they were showing like how they work with people and and I was telling Tony this story because they kept on like showing his paws on the snow and they were like cracked and bleeding. And so Brownie's like the parents were willing to work with them and that they were going to give like a bag of free food to and like and they were trying to like clear out space in their house so Brownie could be inside the house. And they said a lot of times we have to work with people because you know, people don't know how long their dogs can stay outside in the cold and they just leave them out there for like hours on end, like as if like, you know, an animal can handle it more than, you know, a, a person can. And I was telling Tanya about that tonight and she said, you know, cause I, <laughs> I made a really harsh statement about those people and uh, it was a little judgmental, but I, I have a, I, I feel like, I don't know, I, I have a hard time with that ignorance when it comes to animals treatment, you know? And, um, she said, I feel like people that have to question how long their animals should be outside probably shouldn't have pets. And I was like, exactly. If you cannot think about like, oh, maybe like 10 minutes is too long for your dog to be outside. Like maybe you need to not have a dog. You know what I mean? Like if you can't think that process through. And actually, I didn't know this, but it's a criminal offense in Indiana to leave your dog outside when it's below a certain temperature. I mean, I, I stand right at the door, like the sliding glass door. I stand right there or I walk outside with them. And they're, I mean, our dogs are not outside any longer than a minute and a half. I mean, and the th they won't poop outside. So, I mean, you know, like they poop, like Tucker and Boo Radley pooped outside. Pee Pee has pooped like on the hardwood floors, which is not nice, but we've had to clean it up. But, you know, honest to God, when it's this cold outside, I mean, it's like, you know, eight degrees, 10 degrees with, you know, this last two days, it's been like in the negatives. You know, I would rather have Pee Pee, his poop is so small anyway, you know, poop inside the house and we can clean it up in five minutes, five seconds then have him be outside wandering around in the snow finding the per perfect place to poop and then he is gets frostbite on his paws no i'm not going to allow that you know and those are just the things you handle and deal with when you're a dog the parent makes me so sad that people treat their dogs that way i just really do not understand it whatsoever and cats too I mean, it breaks my heart for cats and um how other like animals like wild animals like rabbits and squirrels and stuff handle it or if they like make little nests and they just stay in them and stay warm all the time you know like what do you think is that stupid to ask I may have to look that up and see do we know does anybody know I have like gone way down out of my way I have no clue where I'm at right now so I'm gonna turn around I'm in this residential area. 
trailer park because I have no clue where this is. I've never been to this part of town before. I know when I make this statement, people are going to be like, are you kidding? But is there something cozy to you about certain like trailer parks that just look real homey? I um, started this book years ago and it was about these two little girls that lived in a trailer park with their mom. Right? It takes place on 4th of July weekend. I got like a third of the way through the book and actually we had just interviewed Ellen Hopkins who's to me one of the greatest uh, young adult authors and maybe she'd be considered a new adult because it's a little bit more, it's about drugs and she is about drugs and alcohol and prostitution she wrote a book, series of books called uh, Tricks and uh, Traffic and it was about prostitution in Las Vegas. And it was like these five kids that came to Las Vegas on different conditions. And then she wrote like Glass. And her books are so incredible. And they're all about um, drugs and alcohol. And she's such a fantastic writer. They're written like they're in prose, but they're not in prose. But they, they look like that if you would look at the pages. And so anyway, um, but I like was talking to her about it and I sent her part of my book and she was like oh this is fantastic and this is before I knew really what direction I wanted my writing to go in and she was like you're definitely a young adult writer you know like don't even question that and um but then I kind of just fell away from that story idea oh my lord do a little bit of work tomorrow and then I'm off for the whole day and then I have to go pick up the dogs between 3 and 6 tomorrow they're going to be so excited when they come home Boo Bradley is always well one year they're always very excited when they come home with their new like rooms and nails and all that kind of stuff you know but one year um, it was the first time that we shaved Boo because we shaved them down now um, cause we would get them cut really, really short, but it would take hours for the groomer to do it. So we just have them cut, shaved all the way down. They like it better anyway. And, um, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, and, um, who Radley came home and he went down to his house and he, like, would not come out of his house. And I called Tanya and I said, Tanya, I don't know what's wrong. Like, Boo Radley won't come out of his house. And he, she was like, sometimes dogs get embarrassed of their haircuts. I was like, seriously? She was like, yeah, I know it sounds funny. And she's like, but they do. They get, like, really embarrassed of their, you know, haircuts. And that they have these, like, you know, super intense haircuts. So. so excited to show me her bedroom tonight. She redid the whole thing. It's all like bohemian and she's got like this uh, VW bus sign over her bed and it says peace on it with all these flowers. It's very cool. It's like rustic and she bought it at like this arts festival. It's really big. It's like a headboard but it says like it looks like the front of like a VW bus and then it's like and it's metal and it has like the peace sign on it and all kinds of stuff. And then she had these, like, uh, lights hanging with these, like, roughly curtains. And it was very cool. And then she had all of these, like, anthropology blankets and pillows that she had gotten. And they were, like, covering the bed. She was so excited. I was like, I have a feeling Eric probably doesn't love all of this. She's like, well, this is more for when I, like, nap. And I like to be in my, like, bohemian, like, room. that closed down and now I don't know what it is. Do you guys have those in your town? Like things closed down and you're like, what did that used to be and you don't remember? Do you know what you very rarely see anymore? Now watch, I'll say this and I'll run into one. It's a Long John Silver's. And I remember when I was a kid, they would have this bucket and you could like get a toy out of it. Do they still do that? I don't think they still do that. But I used to love to go there and get chicken planks and hush puppies. Ah, oh, I love them so much. And I remember they're 
root beer or Coke tasted really good too and it had that little crushed ice in it. I don't know why I just thought of Long John Silver's. That building kind of looked like a Long John Silver's. My dad on Wednesdays, you know Wednesdays are dad nights, like divorce dad nights. We went to Long John Silver's a lot of Wednesdays. I don't know why I remember that, but we did. My dad loved Long John Silver's or Dog and Suds, which I actually put that in my book, that the dad and the kid go to Dog and Suds. My dad loved uh, Dog and Suds. And I mean, well, aside from being a vegetarian, I don't think I had had a hot dog before, probably since 4th of July. Oh, yeah, we went over to our friends on 4th of July, and um, they made, like, brats. I actually like brats better than hot dogs. I'm not a big hot dog fan. I'm ready for summer, though. Like, I am so ready to, like, enjoy, like, our pool and just being outside I want to travel a lot. We travel a lot more in the summer than we do, like, in the winter, which is, I guess we should travel in the winter, but, like, Tanya was looking tonight at different places in Florida to go, and even Key West and, like, the Bahamas and Mexico were, like, cooler right now and cloudy, and she's like, why would I pay to go to, like, Mexico or the Bahamas when basically the weather is very similar? I mean, it's not similar at all. I mean, it's not like it's 10 below, but it's, like, not warm for the Bahamas, you know what I mean? I agree. Ugh. But like in February, like into February, March, like a lot of colleges have spring breaks. I can remember going with my dad places. Like I went a couple years when I was on spring break with my dad on trips. We went to Grand Cayman. My first boyfriend and I traveled with my dad and my stepmom quite a bit. We went to Cancun. We went to Grand Cayman. We went to St. Martin. We went to St. Bart's. We went to... Curacao, we went to some, where else did we go? Anguilla. And it was always really, really warm. Isn't that funny? Like, I was talking about this last night. Like, I've had some amazing trips with my family. Like, I've just been so blessed to take some amazing trips. But, like, they're always, like, beachy places like that, which I love. Don't get me wrong. I, any vac I could take a vacation and be at a beachy place every time. But, like, I haven't seen a lot of the world that I wanted to see. Like, I haven't seen, like, I mean, I've seen, I've, I've seen parts of, like, Europe. I've seen London. I've seen all the countryside. I've seen Scotland. Um, one of our very best friends lives in Ireland. Ireland. We're planning to make a trip over there to go see her and go to some other places, possibly, around Ireland. Um, and... Alex really wants to go to Portugal. We both want to go to Portugal. We've kind of thought about maybe moving there in the future if we don't move to Florida. Um, it was kind of like a bucket list dream of ours. But that would be way in the future. Um, but like I haven't, like I said last night, I haven't seen Washington, D.C. You know, I haven't seen a lot of places. I've been to San Francisco. I've been to Los Angeles. Arizona, but like I haven't been to Sedona, I haven't been to Foursquare. Um, where are the other places that I wanted to go in the United States? I haven't seen the Badlands, I haven't seen you know any of those kinds of things that are like American history, you know, that I want to see. Or if I have, I went and I saw it when I was such a young kid that I don't remember anything about it. You know, and I think, like, I would love to go to Maine and Vermont. I've heard, like, Booth Bay Harbor, Maine is gorgeous, you know, like, in the fall. I think that would be fun to do. Um, but Alex and I both really, really want to go to Savannah, Georgia. Um, I've never been there. I'd love to go and stay in some little small hotel or bed and breakfast. I've heard it's gorgeous. Maybe that would be like a, maybe that's a spring trip that we'll do, like a late spring trip, like a long weekend. Does anybody know about Savannah or live in Savannah, like what they think about that or if they have a hotel they could recommend? Please put it in the comment section below. I don't know much about Savannah, but I, I know that that doesn't have to be a super expensive trip and that would be fun for us to do um, and just kind of like walk around and stuff. We've been all through Florida. I don't need to get, like, I love Florida and we're gonna move there someday, but like, I don't know that there's parts of Florida that I really wanna see. 
Texas, I'd like to go to Dallas. Um, we have a couple friends that live in Dallas. Where else? Um, oh, Portland and Seattle are two places that I really, really want to go. Um, that I have never been to before. I've been to Colorado quite a bit. I don't, like, I would love to see it. Montana and Wyoming, I would love to go to. Um, because I haven't been to Montana and Wyoming, and I think it would be beautiful to go there and see that. So, I don't know. I, I, I would really, like, I think I'm going to really take some opportunities this year to just do, like, weekend trips with Alex. And, um, like, four-day weekends to Seattle or four-day weekend to, you know, uh, Portland or something and leave on, like, a Thursday afternoon and come back on, like, a Monday. Because we can, you know, for him, well, it's not really my schedule so open, but for him, you know, he can do that. He can take off a Friday and a Monday really easily. So maybe we'll do that, and this will be the year that we, like, get a lot of those cities off our bucket list. I just don't know a lot about, like, well, my, I have a good friend that lives in Portland, but other than that, I don't know a lot about, like, Seattle that, you know, like, or Maine or Vermont. I really do want to see Vermont. I heard it's beautiful, but where in Vermont? Like, I mean, you don't go to all, the whole state of Vermont, you know what I mean? So it's like, where in Vermont do you go? Maybe we'll look at doing that next fall sometime. Or maybe we'll go skiing there next year. Alex doesn't really want to ski. I've been trying to get him to want to go skiing, but he doesn't really want to do it. <laughs> like I said last night, he's like, what? Get all, like, you know, dressed up warm or so you can go out in the cold and be outside all day long falling in, in the snow. He's like, no, that doesn't sound real desirable for me. But I miss it, so maybe we will, we'll try it. I don't know. Maybe we'll do, like, a little weekend Michigan trip. Upstate Michigan is fun, too, and Alex has never been there. Like, Saugatuck and, like, uh, Benton Harbor and uh, Charlevoix and, like, Mackinac. Oh, Mackinac is so pretty. And uh, it's expensive, though. That's where they filmed the movie, Somewhere in Time. I haven't been there since I was a kid. I would love to do that again. There's a lot of places I want to go. And that's just in the United States. I mean, outside of the world, you know, outside of the rest of the world, there's so many places that I want to go to. You know, Alex and I have so many places on our list that we really want to travel to. So that will probably be in the next couple of years that we really start doing some of that stuff. And I'm excited about it. All right. Well, I'm going to get off here. And, um, yeah, I will see you guys tomorrow. And I love you. And I hope you're having a wonderful day. Bye.